friend. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm doing really, really well. Cannot complain. You are here on NotFest Daily. Welcome to the show, and thank you so much thank for joining you. me today. Yep, thank you, thank you. Of course. How's it going over there? Good, good. Uh, you know, today tickets going south for the tour. Uh, very excited and had a good morning so far. So we just hope to kind of keep it going. Um, I I manage the band as well with our other guitar player, JB. So like anytime, this is very exciting for us. You know, we haven't been able to put tickets on sale for anything in person in a long time. So so we're we're pretty excited. It seems kind of simple, but it's one of those things where you've been away from it for so long. So even just something like your phone buzzing or a fan saying, oh my God, I got my tickets. Or I can't wait for this. I, I just can't imagine the energy for all of you guys right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's extremely exciting. Even when we were just preparing for like this last live stream, we didn't know we'd be able to do this tour until after we were already deep into um, preparing for our leveler live stream. So we found out like halfway through that we'd be able to do the tour. And, you know, when we were practicing for that, we we're just like, it's kind of a bum out that we're practicing for a live stream. And we know that after this live stream, we're going to be able to announce that we're doing it for a tour. <laughs> like, it's just kind of like, and it, I mean, doing the live stream was great. And, you know, people love those things. And I'm happy to provide entertainment right now. But like, just having that in the back of our minds, just like knowing what's coming, it was just yeah. kind of like, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> At least you're keeping the gears oiled, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah. The next thing you know, yeah. you'll actually be able to have that crowd and just everyone rallying. I, uh, I can't imagine how much you must miss that. It would drive me crazy. A lot. I know you, we miss it a lot. It, you know, you see like bands go on stage every night and you get that like huge serotonin release because everyone's there just like hanging out, having a good time and like, just makes you feel good and then all of a sudden it's like ah, never mind <laughs> stay at home for a while but it's you know we we survived and you know hopefully we'll come back even stronger that's that's the hope oh i have no doubt that you guys will 100 percent now i do want to say congratulations you. you're welcome congratulations on the 10th anniversary of leveler when you think back to a full decade ago and just kind of the fruition of putting this record together what are some of the first memories that happen to come to mind um with leveler it was you know we went back to um jason sukoff who did our constellations record and i just remember like one of the big things for us was constellations was such a big record for us that you know we knew leveler had to be a good follow-up but we also wanted to kind of start you know expanding on our sound a little bit and that was one of the big things i remember like this is the first record where we really started to like add parts that weren't like completely metal to, to the songs. Like some we have internal canon that um, Matt Heafy just did a guest spot for us for the re-release on. Um, you know, it just has like a salsa groove in the middle of it. And it was like the first record that we started to kind of add those elements into the album. And I think going into the studio and thinking about that was, it was exciting, but it was also a bit nerve wracking. Like, are people gonna like this? Or are they gonna hate it? Or <laughs> Like we have such a we have such a good fan base already at that point that it's like it's either gonna be a really great decision or a really bad decision. And you know, I think in the end it ended up being a good decision. I think some fans are like, eh, I'd prefer they didn't have those parts, but there's plenty of songs without those parts that the fan that those people right. can get into. But it was just an element that we decided to add and it kind of started with this record. So I really remember that about it. It's so nice when you can revisit that stuff and realize that was actually like a pretty pinnacle point. And now going forward, you're, you're not scared to kind of mess around with the tracks and add in little things yeah. like that because it's been proven, hey, people are going to like it. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And we just kind of kept going with it for a little bit. And, you know, so far, so good. How was it kind of revisiting all of these decade old songs? Because I can imagine a little bit of the uh, the nostalgia. For some people, it feels like, whoa, that feels like yesterday and forever. Uh, or for some people, it must feel like it was forever ago. Yeah, I mean, nostalgia is such a big thing. I mean, that's why all these tours exist now. And it's like going back and relearning the songs is fun. It's also challenging because... Um, with like Messengers and Constellations, when we did 10 year stuff for those, those were records that at the time when those came out, like we didn't have a ton of material yet. So we were playing most of those songs live already. Whereas with Constellate, I mean, with Leveler, this is the first record that, you know, we've had, we had, this is our fourth album, we have tons of material. 
So like a lot of these songs, we never even played live. Like we've never gotten the opportunity to right. play them. So <laughs> we had to like completely relearn songs that we've never played live. And the only time we ever recorded or played them was in a but studio. We so playing. yeah, so Jeez. it it was definitely challenging to do that, but it was also fun to do that. And the fact that a lot of these songs are going to get like their live first time ever debut is sick. Like that's kind of cool to think about after 10 years. But uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the nostalgia is real. It's real for everyone. Um, that's why these tours exist. They're, they're fun and we're proud of all the records we've put out. So, you know, we're gonna keep doing them because fans seem to enjoy them. And it's a good way of like, if you stop listening to the band for a little while or something like that, hearing that they're going to do a tour of your favorite record maybe or like one of your favorite records it ends up bringing them back into the fold a little bit and they check out the yeah. newer stuff so it's like a win-win for everyone for sure and you had mentioned playing some of those tracks live for the first time and of course that does coincide with the massive fall 2021 tour there's pretty much yeah there's almost 50 dates across north america so just speaking to <laughs> yeah. that's a huge tour so just speaking that's to how we much, that's how that's how we tour. We like to do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Glutton for punishments, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, that's the thing. Like when we tour, we just go out because, you know, after that tour, we'll probably take like three or four months off. Like that's kind of just how we roll. Like we just like, we do a big long tour and then we take a break for like, you know, four months. And then we'll maybe go do like a month in Europe. And we'll come home. But if it's the States, like we just kind of pound it. We're not into the whole, We'll do 30 days and then we'll go back out again in like a month, do another 30 days. Like we just, we don't, we don't do that. We're, if we're going on tour, we're going on tour. <laughs> what are you most excited about when it does come to finally being back? Is it the performances, just the good times with the guys on the road? It's both, you know, like there's some of the guys who are in, in our crew that are like some of my best friends that I haven't seen in, you know, it'll be 18 months. And wow. that's just because we have some Canadian crew members and, um, <laughs> yeah, we have some Canadian crew members and, you know, we can't, we can't see them. So, um, like for us, we keep, we keep crew for a really long time. If you become an August Red crew member, you're going to be around for a while. Like, and that's important to us because we want the show to run smoothly every time. Um, and so, that's that's a big deal like being able to have everyone together this would be the first time like we toured with like 12 we toured the party of 12 this would be the first time all 12 of us have been together in 18 months it will be the first like day that's of pre-production for that tour crazy. so and you know it's people that you you know you consider like your family almost because we live with them for six months out of the year um so very excited for that we're just very excited for the first day of tour um the first day of tour is in philly which is like considered our hometown show it's in philadelphia and it's the first day of the of the 2021 like nfl football season and we're all huge eagles fans so like it's gonna be pretty fitting <laughs> we're, we're definitely coming out to the call when the eagles won the super bowl a couple of years ago for sure <laughs> like it's it's we're gonna make it pretty awesome i think that's amazing. I know for me, anytime I've been on my my wrestling tours or done stuff with bands before, I always just think of a city and immediately my brain goes to a cool spot or an awesome diner that I went to. So yeah. is there anywhere in your mind where you're thinking, oh, man, I can't wait to just go back there again? I mean, there's so many places uh, like that. Yeah, there's tons of places. I, it was just funny. I was just looking at our Facebook page and someone was like, I'll see you in Grand Rapids. And I love Grand Rapids. Like the venue you play in Grand Rapids, Michigan is right next to Founders Brewing, which is like okay. an incredible beer brewery that we all love going to. So that right there, like just like seeing that comment, I was like, oh, yeah, as soon as the show's over, I'm going to Founders. Um, <laughs> but like it, there's just a lot of places like that. And, you know, you look at the tour routing and there's we've been to a lot of these places so many times now that like there's just definitely places that I'm going to go to because I've been there like 10, 15 times at this point. Yeah. Like it's, it, I'm very excited for that aspect for sure. Oh, I can't even imagine. I'm excited just to finally see tours and actually be able to go yeah. out to a, you know, you know how it is. You kind of always have that favorite venue. Then you have that spot you're going to hit up afterwards with everybody and you're on to yeah. the next. So just being back in yeah. the groove is going to be exciting. I'm sure. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely. Very excited for that. Well, the last thing I wanted to ask you about here today, uh, I was looking at some stuff on your Instagram and even months and months ago, I saw this in stories. So how many sweaters would you say your dog owns? 
<laughs> Archer owns. He's probably got like four or five, and it's because okay. so we have two dogs. We have we have a silver lab uh, who's just like an absolute meatball, and then we have uh, Archer who is he's like a hound mix, and he's he's, he's he's a big dog, but he's thin. He's and he doesn't have a lot of fur. I'm guessing wherever his breed came from, it was somewhere down south. So like we'll put him outside in the winter and in 30 seconds he's on the steps just like shivering to come in and i'm like all right Aww. time for a sweater like he just can't he, he just can't deal with the cold he has like he has like no fur like right here on his belly like none <laughs> so as soon as it gets cold you gotta cover him up <laughs> no there's this one that you posted that really stood out to me it was just you two it looked like you were just chilling on the couch with your friend like he yeah. had the old man sweater on i was like this is awesome yeah That's a- <laughs> he's getting old he's getting old he's gonna be nine this year so he's getting up there but um my dog's turning 16 and he's still insane so <laughs> yeah i think he's gonna last i think he's gonna last a while he's like he tore both of his acls in the best in the past year oh, no. but that hasn't generally slowed him down too much he's really like spry and like our silver lab's only two years old and the nine-year-old dog is still way faster than him. Archer's like the <laughs> fastest dog I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I love it. Well, I really do want to say thank you so, so much, Brent, for taking the time coming on here. Congratulations on all the badass thank stuff you. you guys have going on. It's been awesome chatting with you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, everybody, once again, this has been Brent from August Burns Red. A massive thank you to him. And for everybody who is watching, please do not forget to check out their re-recorded anniversary edition of Leveler, which is out now. And catch them this fall as they hit the road across North America with Fit for a King, Era, and Like Moths to Flames. Again, thank you so, so much, Brent. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it.